for a few road films this year that were popular and successful. And what's interesting about these films is that each was different from the other. I have to start by asking, what do you think or who do you think has changed in the last few years? Is it the industry that is now telling different stories or is it the audience that's now embracing different films? I, I have a strong point of view on this. I think uh, communicators in India take our audiences for granted and uh, dumb them down and start saying that audience doesn't like it. But actually the truth is that you didn't give it to them, mm -hmm. which is why they were forced to live with what you had. Uh, so the audience is the same. The audience you know, enjoys uh, uh, new properties and creativity, new stories being told in different ways. I mean, what fascinating, fascinatingly different narratives you've seen. And uh, as a viewer as a, and as a writer, I'm uh, amazed and I've, I'm privileged to have colleagues like that. Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, there was a time when uh, um, communicators thought that there has to be one universal language. Um, uh, so, uh, there were no surnames to characters. Mm. Uh, they were all either from Ramgarh or from Mumbai. Uh, but then some of us who brought in our own experiences where we grew up, uh, the Duggals or the Wikis or the, uh, you know, and they spoke their own languages. And uh, um, uh, so earlier what used to happen was that everybody would play safe and uh, make them speak a universal language. In terms of dialogue, what's happening is that uh, I find characters speaking much more spoken Hindi, mm. not written Hindi. There's no dialogue bazi. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And 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 that uh, the richness and the uh, and the earthiness of dialogue is coming through and it's being accepted because earlier it would be seen as maybe it's not you know commercial enough or maybe not grand enough, but grand is not necessarily great uh, now. You know, it's become something of a Bollywood cliche to say that script is the most important commodity in a film. It's the most important asset, the strength of a film. And the writers are the most valuable commodities. Um, but on a more functional level, do you feel like writers get the credit that they deserve, um, that they get paid as much as they ought to? Do you feel like script writers are the most valuable commodities on a set? No. They should be, but they're not. And why, Zoya? I mean, as a film, you know, you're, you're someone who makes films as well. Why would you say? Because I think, I mean, uh, coming back to what they were talking about, mm. yes, I do believe that filmmakers are changed, but I don't think it's because we didn't have good storytellers. I think everything kind of boils down to economics. Mm. I think the fact that we have that many more screens now, uh, also the audience has changed with satellite television. The next generation, I mean, the last 15, 20 years have hugely exposed our audience to a lot of kinds of film, mm. language, lingo, uh, sensibility, and not just morality, yeah, it's changed. Yeah. And the fact that we have so many screens and that many films need to release and we only have 10 actors that sell, you know, so if they are doing 10 films, what do the other filmmakers do? Right. How do you compete with a big starer? You compete with content. Mm. I think uh, people say content is king, mm. but uh, uh, they don't understand that in practice. They don't understand it. We had a great experience in Ban Baja and the, the funny side of that was uh, um, May Yashji's soul rest in peace. Um, he was going through the uh, first lot of expenditure and uh, uh, he, he was going through that and then with a frown he called Manish and the uh, executive producer Ashish. Uh, and he said, uh, okay, all of this is fine. Um, but why did the writer go for a recce? <laughs> and Manish said, uh, but sir, he knows Delhi uh, quite well and uh, he has also shot his first film there and uh, he has a sense of uh, uh, where should be uh, mm. doing all of this. He said, I will not write it. But when, when, when the process happened and then the film came out, then he completely embraced that and then, so, so uh, when all of that happens, Works. Uh, you realize the then, better yeah, topic. Then, yeah. then it, uh, and I, I think the more the writer becomes a part of that process, mm. uh, the, the more um, there will be a clarity. You know, I feel uh, uh, things are certainly changing mm. and uh, uh, because I've uh, been an outsider in Bollywood and by choice for the last 10 years. I was a journalist in Delhi. Um, and uh, I've certainly noticed a far more sort of a movement towards being organized. but. Uh, I think we are the privileged few. Uh, if you go to the coffee shop uh, uh, near my home in Versova, 
uh, at every table a film is being made and a film is being made for the last 10 months, 12 months where a certain person throws the name ki wo, uh, Karina ke secretary se baat hui thi, unhone kaha hai, haan, sunne ko tiyar hai. And there are, there are entire, you know, uh, careers surviving on little shreds of hope like that. But uh, beyond that, how, how do you go forward and how do you get compensated in a fair way is, is I think, certainly an issue. Yeah, and uh, I guess it happens when you Bollywood. have um, sort of reached a certain place. So then there is a certain security yeah, that right. comes with it. Otherwise, um, a DOP shoot, so there is a tangible image. Correct. Yeah. Music director produces music, so there is music to listen to, costumes, uh, production design. Uh, the writer could yeah. have easily yeah. narrated. Yeah. narrated right. And then oh. you can get someone else to write that. Right. And, uh, but yes, there are, um, um, just to educate uh, those who don't know about it, there is a structure and there is a body to writers' rights right. also. Correct. And I, if you cannot pay a writer less than 0.5% of your budget, your film is, mm -hmm. your uh, we, in, the Indian audience is a story audience. Right. They are interested in stories. And I mean, I really believe you can have a very bad script, mm. you know, and a great director won't be able to do anything with it. And you can have an, like, like a really average director mm. and you give him a great script and he'll pull through. Okay. You know, it's as yeah. simple as that. Yeah. You can't compensate a good story with anything. And uh, we don't want to pay our writers enough. So how, how do you expect them to spend four or five months right. on one job? Developing it, yeah. Developing yeah. it and giving it, it, they can't afford to do that. Sure. I feel as a culture, right. as a film yeah, culture, and I think enough. as producers, yeah. mm. people aren't... They don't do enough for and, it. And, no. and, the, and the poor writers, because they are so scared... It's so uh, abstract, that whole... I have spoken yeah. to Juhi on the phone and I've told her what a wonderful script. But I would love to, hey listen, I've got this idea. Bounce can we it meet off for, each other. Yeah, sure, can can sure. we meet for coffee? But then I'm wondering, okay, uh, I discussed this with Juhi and next thing I know uh, it finds uh, its way, uh, uh, some germ or yeah, some right, idea right. into um, Jaffna yeah. or <laughs> Madras Cafe or whatever. So there is this whole, uh, it would Appreciate be great. Yeah. Because, because ultimately, uh, you know, if information, if ideas don't get exchanged, things will never look good. Sure. To each of you, what is your starting point? Is it the characters or the story? It's just the idea. I think uh, it starts from there. Mm -hmm. And to have a small little idea or whatever, and then to have one single line of it. I mean, there has to be a possibility of it converting into a, to a film. Mm. And that, I think, uh, before you know, I go around sharing my idea. So idea might be just one line, mm. but I know in my head that there is a to our film there. Okay. I mean, I've never had a story before I've started any script. It's okay. always been a milieu that excites me. Mm. Uh, with uh, a luck by chance, I think it was thematic. It was being in this industry and everybody telling you everybody uh, whether they're successful or not. Mm. And you're just waiting for someone else to tell you you're a success <laughs> and someone else to tell you you're a failure. And it's just bizarre. It's so mm. polarized. And you're just waiting to be validated by other people. And I think it just came from there. And it's also was closest. It, it's home. It's mm. your first film and it's what you know the most. And I think it was that. It was just thematically that and uh, for me Zindagi was just I wanted to be on a road trip because I've done so many and they just give you a sense of something when you're done with it and it was like what is that what is that what do you feel mm. and I discussed that with Rima and I was like I want to write a road trip I just want to do a road trip and organically the theme came out of that okay I'm never like this will happen that what a great I, I, I just don't have an idea ever till by the end of the <laughs> script, I'm like, that's the idea. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what the film's about. Okay. To the two of you? Um, when I am writing for myself, then it is um, uh, primarily the idea. Mm. And the idea basically has to do with something that has uh, either disturbed me or excited me. Um, in, 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 say, Dudunichar's case, it was just the launch of Nano. Okay. And um, the whole excitement of, okay, now we can buy a car. Right. Yeah. Okay. The one line excites me, of course, and I should know the beginning and the end. Um, and I, I'm slightly cynical. I'm, I'm uh, happy to know uh, that Zoya's work uh, evolves organically. Uh, but I'm uh, slightly, uh, I, I think the, 
statement that a story writes itself is one of the biggest lies uh, in the creative no, world. No, it doesn't write itself, <laughs> it doesn't but, the, sure but you can start hmm. and the thing, allow, like I know, I can tell you, what's the story of Zindagi? And I can be like, it's three boys on a road trip. No, I think it's great. And they, ca ca yeah. you know, and they come of age. But thematically, what it's about, right. like you're not going to live twice, only came after when yeah. I was writing yeah. it. Absolutely. I, could, I don't decide like, this is what it's about and now I'm going to write the story. Mm. Right. And if you do that, I, I, I can't function yeah. from the tale. Like we knew, like we were, we were writing Zindagi mm. to be shot in Mexico. Okay. Because I just wanted to be in Mexico for four <laughs> months. That was the plan, <laughs> right? So we started it and then Rima, and w when we started doing this and we were like, the whole adventure sports came in because we were like, we need something that's yeah. cathartic, something yeah. that's yeah. male and usually testosterone yeah. driven, but needs to be poetic, mm -hmm. needs to not be boy, needs to be zen. And when the whole thing happened and we started doing the, um, the, um, the yeah, adventure the, sports, yeah, yeah. that's when Rima mm -hmm. actually was like running with the bulls because that's as mental as it gets. And the movie moved to Spain. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, like yeah. for me and her, mm -hmm. we have to know where we are ending the film. Okay. The film ends with them running with the bulls. Okay. So now you're not going on a wild goose chase with the script. You're starting here, you're this is your there. end point. But on that journey, you realize what the movie is actually, actually about. about. Is there such a thing as an intelligent blockbuster? Or the minute you have big stars involved, you're automatically, in a sense, dumbing down no, because Ramo you're reaching out to very intelligent out blockbuster. To big mass audiences. No, so so if you're talking to writers, then at the writing stage, there is they no blockbuster yeah. or a small film. Exactly. But is that true, really, Habib? It I is. mean, did you not know when you were writing Ekta Tiger that you were writing for Salman Khan? Um, there is this much he's going to respect the script, and you're going to make, you know, all, you're, you're, there is going to, you're going to have to live with the fact that he's going to. Um, change scenes on the set. Yeah, there were uh, the the movie did uh, depart at parts uh, from the script, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure you know uh, Kabir. He's spoken about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but when we were writing it, we were very clear that this, if you're writing about this uh, raw official in a you know Delhi uh, um, uh, government flat who's getting his milk for himself, we we wanted him to be like that, and we wanted him to be grubby, and you know, uh, so we didn't write. We were I was very thrilled that my first film as a scriptwriter has a month time. And you know, what better can one get? But uh, we were uh, not, uh, we were unflinched by that fact. It was a bonus. Okay. But the script did not change. We didn't, for example, dumb down any dialogues, assuming that he would not be able to speak them. Okay. Like, like in the case of Vicky Dono, uh, we, I mean, the story was there, the idea was there, and we really didn't wait for any big star or anybody. It didn't matter because there was a strong story to be told. So everybody in the film, like you saw, was uh, you know everybody's debuts, whether it was the whether it was Yami or whether it was Ayushman or whether any of the character. There was nobody established other than Anuji. Okay. So uh, there was a good story, sure. and that's it. That was the beginning and the Do end of it. Do you know when characters are working? I want to ask you specifically because when you wrote the character of the yeah. mother yeah. and the grandmother, yeah. did you know that these are going to be characters that people are going to love? Yes, because you you fall for them. You yourself as a writer. I mean, I did fell for Dolly G and that BG. I knew exactly how this BG is going to speak about the Sony TV or uh, 32 Batti GB ka hai phone ya 16 GB ka phone hai. Because I mean, there are people like that. Right. And uh, uh, because a lot of it came from my own, um, you know, experiences and all of that. And I have loved those characters. I've seen those people. Are there specific, or is there a specific character in each of the films that you wrote that you're particularly closer to, um, or, or you feel closer to than the others? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you do feel, uh, you know this person inside out. Mm. I mean, every, I think every character has a bit of you. Right. But there's some you just... You just enjoy them, mm -hmm. you know, as a, a, like a, a, a character or like of Kalki. It's just more juicy for me okay. than uh, 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 than Katrina, Leila in Zindagi. In Zindagi, like or Isha Sharwani in Luck by Chance, mm. is just juicier for me. Okay. And I, I loved uh, 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 Mr. Rishi Kapoor, his sure. character Romy Rolly. I just loved it. Okay. So I, I'm I, I do feel closer, and I shouldn't possibly say this because I'd always be making on some films, but. <laughs> But it does happen, you're just, sure. at least for me, you're closer. Uh, Vicky Rona, see, the film was about Vicky mm. and Chadha primarily, and uh, BG and Dolly provided that little comic relief for, you know, very interesting Punjabi uh, layers they had. 
But I think uh, Yami's character, I mean Ashima's character, was I thought was um, very um, a very important part of the film because she's the one who has really suffered the most through the film. Yes. And that writing was slightly tricky because uh, Ashima's character is the one which had maximum layers to it. Okay. You know, plagiarism has become such a frequent allegation that is leveled against films and against writers today. What is the line between inspiration and plagiarism? And also, is it ridiculous to expect that artists will not be inspired? Yeah, it is ridiculous to expect the artist because you're not working in a vacuum. Mm. I watch a movie a day. I watch on an average 30 films. I, I, I rather watch a film than do anything. And uh, so does my co-writer. So between us, we see at least 60 films a month. So where things come from, you're not actively, if you copy the core idea mm. of something, it's plagiarism. You take a scene and you take the scene and you, do, you break the scene up, shot to shot and mm. copy it. That is plagiarism. Steal. And you know when you're doing it. Right. You are stealing. Mm. You know it. There's no two ways about it. Okay. So you can sit there and call it inspiration. Right. And you can point to me and say, I am a stealer. You can do all that. Mm. But you know when you're stealing. It's as simple as that. I mean, we've been accused of uh, 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 plagiarizing Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. I saw the movie that uh, uh, I was accused of uh, about three-fourth into the making of the film. Because my skydiving... A cameraman mm. asked me to watch it uh, for a reference. So I watched it for a reference. Rima still hasn't seen the film. Okay. Yeah? And uh, it has a blue car in it. Uh, you know what I mean? It's a road trip with a blue car. So was Dil Chata Hai. Yeah, I mean, not that Dil Chata Hai was a road trip. But I haven't stolen the film. You know, I, and I didn't even steal the blue car. But if I had even taken the blue car, that's inspiration. Mm. If I made a film and I said, you know, I like that blue car yeah. in that movie. And I, want I like that color blue. Color, yeah. I'm going to take that. That is... Not no, stealing. stealing. Uh, and I think people that steal films, like steal a movie or, you know, stuff, I mean, they should be pulled up for it. They should be. But mm. there's a fine line. Sure. Finally, I want to ask, what's the one Hindi film you saw this year that made you go, I wish I'd written that? Pan Singh Thoma for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I thought, very honest, even though you know, it's not, it is a biography and um, but there was something so honest in its writing, even actually gangs, gangs also, but Pan Singh, the simplicity of this character, every scene, the honesty, the way it was shot, the way it was written, the way it was performed, everything, I wish I was part of that film. I really wish I was part of that film. There's a film that hasn't been released uh, called Peddlers. Mm. Yeah. Um, very, very yeah. well written. Masan Bada's film. Uh, Pansing. Yeah. Yeah. I like Gangs. I really liked Gangs. It was very good. I like Shanghai as well. Mm. And uh, um, what else? Yeah, I go with Gangs. Well, thank you very much for this. I think this is a conversation that can, that can go on. But I, I suppose what's important and what's key and what we've derived from this is that things have changed and things are changing. Um, and, and, and really, I think, uh, What's interesting is that there are writers who are bringing in their own experiences into their um, writing and, and perhaps, and that's why Hindi cinema is the better for it. So thank you so much for this. Here's hoping that you will continue to excite us and surprise us with the material that you put out each year. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.